So we will go now to our Washington correspondent, Anne-Marie Hordern, who has been really on top of this story from the beginning. Anne-Marie, what's the latest from Washington? The latest from Washington are those crippling sanctions on the financial sector, David, and they are pretty harsh when you look at targeting VTB and Spurbank. These are two of Russia's biggest banks, and if you're a Russian citizen, you will definitely likely have an account at either one of these banks. And we already heard from the central bank today saying they don't want banks to go forward with dividends or bonuses to managers. They want to make sure that things are stabilizing. So there obviously is some concern in the financial community, but David, the elephant in the room is, of course, the United States is not going after the oil and gas market for Russia. This is the Russian state's lifeblood. It's how President Putin is able to have more than $600 billion in reserves. It's why he's able to have those alleged billions he has stored up around the world. And I spoke to the special envoy for energy security, and one of the arguments he said is that if they were to go after oil and gas, the prices would spike immediately. We saw the complete opposite yesterday, with Brent falling under $100 a barrel. And and then he said that Putin would probably be able to still sell some of that oil and gas, but at a higher price, and all that would, it would hurt is U.S. consumers. Yeah, so I watched that interview. It was fascinating. And the question that I had was, can we really have our cake and eat it, too? And that is to say, can we have real sanctions that will really hurt President Putin and Russia without it hurting us? Because it seems like we're sort of fighting with one hand tied behind our back. It's a really good question, because SWIFT at the moment is off the table right now. The, the United States, maybe the U.K., could potentially be leaned into it, but they want all of Europe also to go along with that. And the issue with SWIFT is that would cause a lot of headache for particularly uh, European and European banks as well. It's a great question, David, because we've been here before with President Putin, haven't we? 2008, he recognized South Ossetia and Abkhazia. Then 2014, he recognized Crimea, and 24 hours later, he annexed it. There was poisonings in the United Kingdom. There have been sanctions on Russia, and they've still been able to continue. And you look at the United States as a carve-out for energy. The Telegraph is reporting a carve-out for luxury goods, Gucci handbags and the likes, when you're coming from Italy. So President Vladimir Putin is definitely going to be looking at the tone and what the carve-outs are going to be and what each individual country is trying to scathe, uh, come out unscathed in terms of what matters to their economies.